right, all right guys, we're back. And I did get the push rod lengths measured. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I did that. I've obviously got this head torqued all the way down with the old um, head gasket in there. I used the old one just because I'm about to tear it up again. But that gives me at least the, the thickness off the block that it'll be. And then I've got these first two rockers here and I have my push rod tool right here for my setup and it ended up being uh, that tool is the seven and a half to eight and a half inch tool so I actually went ahead these lifters are only like four bucks a piece so I bought a whole new lifter and then I took the guts out, out of it and basically filled it in with some washers and nuts and bolts and whatever would fit in there until I got this plunger to sit right at the perfect height, uh, right at the same height as one of those ones would if it was pumped up all the way. That way I didn't have to worry about, you know, pumping up the lifters or anything or them sinking back down because they are, you know, they do have a spring in them and they'll sink back down once you put some pressure on them. So then I put that solid lifter in each one of those bores down there one at a time. I did intake first and then exhaust and then put a little bit of machinist dye. There it is on the tip of the valve and then put the rockers on torqued them down and then rolled the engine over twice just by hand and it would have or rolled the engine over at however many times it took i don't remember if it's twice as many or half as many but however many times it takes to make the camshaft go over twice and then you can see right there it made a mark on it and on this one let's see if i can get the light right you can see that mark is pretty much dead center on that valve and i just adjusted the uh this push rod tool to the right length so that it wasn't walking around or anything. And for me, since these rockers went with this head, it was really simple. I just had to figure out what length these push rods needed to be. Sometimes you have to put shims under the rockers in order to center that uh, mark on the valve stem, but um, I didn't have to. So then I've got my push rod length. I can measure that. And uh, luckily there's a ton of options on like Summit Racing for those. So I have 16 of those coming in. And now I'm gonna take this head back off, re-clean the surfaces. Obviously this head's been off for a couple days and I guess I should have taped it up or something. I don't know why I didn't. So I need to go through and clean all that up with some WD-40 or some oil. And um, then we'll clean the surface up here. And next step would be to put the heads back on. I got the heads off and then I came through and cleaned that up all right. And next step would be to install some new dowel pins. This was one of the ones that came off and it's pretty gnarled up. So I got some new ones, they come in a set of four. They just align the head on the block and the gaskets, keeps it all in place when you bolt it down. Um, you can see on the old heads, it'll end up going right there. So I'm gonna put those in and then it'll be gasket and then heads. Okay, I'm using Felpro Permatort gaskets. They actually say front on them, which is super important to let the water go through the back of the heads, make sure it stays cool. And so it's a huge bore and their compressed thickness is only 0.047 um, so they're not great um, in that respect but they're the stock gasket and I've been running them and they do the job just fine so now we get our engine head again and we somehow gently Lump this over there without setting it on anything and breaking anything or dislodging the gasket and put it back on.
got that lined up. Got that on. There we go. And it'll actually stay there. But uh, of course, get a head bolt back in there as soon as possible. I've seen a lot of different comments on whether or not you can reuse these head bolts, but on these motors you definitely can, as long as they look fine. And I've cleaned these ones up. Huh. They all look fine, they're not pitted or anything, not rusty, so that's good. They do say that you should probably try and put them back in the same uh, hole they came out of, so do try and do that. So there you go. Just gotta torque this one down and then I'll put the other one on. Alright, got the heads torqued on. You can find the torque sequence on these uh, just about anywhere. So, I'm not gonna go over that. Next, I am gonna throw some spark plugs in there because this is gonna be sitting overnight and we'll try to make sure that the whole like surface rest thing doesn't happen again. Um, and then we may bolt up our headers and then cover the top and call it a night, but I'll probably just mesh this into the next video. So we'll see. All right, guys, kind of dropped the ball. Didn't film very much. Obviously got the motor back together. Intakes on, distributor put back together, carburetors on, that's all good to go. Fired it up last night and got it running. I'll do that again for you here. Doesn't have any coolant in it yet. Um, we just ran it for a couple minutes. Got the timing set to uh, base timing at 13 degrees. We'll play with that. I think that's gonna be pretty good though because this distributor has 20 degrees of mechanical advance in it. So at um, total timing, it's gonna be about 33, which should be great for this motor. Um, I think the compression ratio on this is about 8.2, 8.3-ish to 1. Pretty terrible, but good for now. Um, good to get it back on the road. So, that's good. I need to tune the carburetor today. It was running a little bit real weird, but overall, sounds really good. Pretty happy with it. Got to hook up my exhaust pipes on both sides and like I said, fill it with coolant, and then I'll start it back up and um, get this thing on the road. Okay, I got some coolant in it, bolted up the exhaust, and so I'm gonna start her up, and it should start right up. Warm up, top off cooling if I have to, and then I'll tune that carburetor. Well, guys, you probably heard after that startup, it's pretty ticky. And um, I did some research, I didn't like it obviously, so I did some research and I figured out that I think when I measured push rod length, I didn't um, account for preload on the lifters. There's supposed to be a certain amount of preload, and I'll show you that now that I know. Um, probably gonna have to buy a new or uh, new set of push rods, but that's okay. Um, right now we're going to measure what kind of preload we've got on them, and I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. Obviously, I've got the motor all together, but I've got the valve covers off, and that's all we need for right now. All right, hopefully you can hear me through the wind. But basically, what we're gonna do is I've loosened the two bolts that hold down the rockers on the first two rockers on number one cylinder. I've also got it at the top dead center so they're for sure on the base lobe. And you're supposed to get it to where they just tighten up about finger tight and then put a torque wrench on it and torque it to 20 foot pounds. But that torque wrench, when you torque it to 20 foot pounds, it needs to reach 20 foot pounds between a quarter of a turn and a full turn. And if it reaches 20 foot-pounds before 
uh, quarter of a turn, then you have no preload on your lifters, which I am expecting to have happen. So, um, let me just show you how it's done, even though this is my first time doing it. Got that tightened up. I got that one tightened up. And I can almost guarantee this is gonna hit 20 foot pounds almost immediately. But we're gonna start. So I'm starting parallel with the rocker right now. Let's see how soon we hit 20 foot pounds. Mm. I hit it right at a quarter of a turn. And it, it's obviously it started beeping like right before a quarter of a turn. So. I'm thinking I have no preload on those lifters and that's causing the tick. I'm gonna do that exhaust valve now and I'm actually gonna go through every single valve here and um, see what I get. Yeah, that one was even worse. So anyways, that's how it goes. What you're supposed to have is 20 foot pounds. If I start here, expect 20 foot pounds somewhere you know, down here through here. That'd be ideal. So I'm gonna go measure the rest of them, see how bad it all is, and then come up with a plan on ordering new lifters. <laughs> 